guys, it's Melanie. Welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day. So today I wanted to do a little bit more of a chit chat style video talking about my eyebrows. One of the most frequently asked questions on a lot of my videos, um, besides, uh, why is your hair gray, uh, is what do you use on your eyebrows and um, I thought this would be a good video to basically direct people to whenever they ask that question um, so my eyebrows are micro shaded on my face and I figured that I would do this video today because I just got done with my brows healing from my latest micro shading touch-up session that I did last Monday and um, I have had such an amazing experience with this particular procedure or thing, I guess, that I did to my face that I wanted to share, you know, what it was like with you guys, talk about the costs, whether I think the price point of it is worth it, things like that. Um, you know, and I realized that, you know, this is just going to be my opinion just because I think it's worth it and I do I very much think it's worth it um, doesn't mean that it would necessarily be worth it to you but I I thought I'd share my experience for those of you that have questions or um, we're just a little bit more curious about the process so back in the fall of 2017 I actually started doing a lot of research about microblading and at the time microblading was really kind of becoming popular and so did a ton of research on that had kind of read that for the most part microblading was not the best for an oily skin type but I thought uh, maybe maybe it'll be okay let's try it let's try the microblading so I found uh, a microblading artist and um, I cannot remember exactly what I paid at the time I do have some other videos up about the microblading experience but I want to say it was maybe somewhere around like four hundred dollars I think it was somewhere around there um could have been between three and four hundred honestly it was a while ago I don't recall but the videos are on my channel if you want to go reference those so i went in and did my initial session and i found it to be incredibly painful um she did use some lidocaine to numb the area prior to starting with the microblading but just the experience of that like i i am not one to complain a whole lot about pain when it comes to procedures i figure for me like I have birthed a child like I know real pain <laughs> and microblading I could totally handle that right like and I did I handled it just fine it's not like I was crying during the procedure but it was definitely quite uncomfortable like the lidocaine she either didn't leave it on long enough or maybe like it just wasn't very potent but I felt like I felt every single scratch into my brows and so the healing for that was rough my brows were oozing and crusty and looked so gross for a good couple weeks after and then once all of the scabs fell off i just was left with brows that i thought looked okay you know i was like oh i can work with this but i also knew that you know i probably needed a touch-up session but like i just found that almost it seems like immediately after finishing the micro sh microblading up like it started to fade very quickly and I was very careful in terms of avoiding um, skincare around my brows like I always have this kind of buffer here because you know skincare will travel so you have to give yourself a buffer if you're using things like exfoliants tretinoin stuff like that so I've always been very careful with that um, but it just faded and you know that was due to my oily skin type like the pigment I don't think was pushed deep enough into the skin and then I think the oil basically just kind of like essentially washed it away so shortly thereafter I was like okay so microblading not for me then I started looking into micro shading so micro shading uses essentially what is very similar to a tattoo gun 
I do have other tattoos on my body and so I figured you know this this seems to be something that seems to last longer for people with an oily skin type in the research I was doing so I ended up finding an artist that was part of a like group of like cosmetic tattoo artists in this studio and I really connected with her with her her name was Rio and um, she was like yeah you know had you come and seen me first and asked for microblading I would have said absolutely not like there is no pigment left in your skin in fact she said there were several scars that were like in my brows that she could see I didn't really notice them I did have some brow hairs left but not very many um, but she could see scars from the micro shading and she was like the girl didn't do a very good job and she left you with some scars which you know they were hidden it was fine like I wasn't really concerned about that um the, by the way the reason that I ever like went and did any of this was because I over plucked my eyebrows in the very early 90s I was in middle school and high school in the 90s and then college the latter part of the 90s and um at that time it was quite fashionable to just pluck your brows into an oblivion like i had those really super thin classic 90s brows and at the time you know i that was the look and it was fine but it just wasn't my preference anymore i think that eyebrows are an important part of the face and one of the things that i'm stressing to my daughter now is to be very careful with brow trends and to not over pluck your brows to the point that they just refuse to even grow back I did at one point do a little bit of an experiment with minoxidil to regrow my brows and I shared that journey here on YouTube. It worked, it did regrow some of the hairs, but it was incredibly tough on my skin. It made the skin around my brows really dry and flaky and just wasn't great. So anyway, that was why I looked into this in the first place. I was really just tired of putting on my brows every single day. Um, most days my brows looked decent, but there were days where my brows were not even like related in any kind of, they were not, they certainly weren't ever twins. Some days they were sisters. A lot of days they were like super distant cousins. Like I'm talking like four or five times removed. Like getting your brows <laughs> To look even every single day is certainly something that some people really excel at and um, for me it was just really hard to get it perfect most days so it just made sense to get it done right like this was going to make my life easier and has it ever that is honestly my favorite thing about going through with this micro shading but anyway let's go back to the first time that i did it so um, when I went to go visit Rio, you know, she mapped my brows super carefully. I will say much more carefully than the microblading girl did. So I'm thinking that microblading girl, maybe she was just starting out. She did have a portfolio and what she did have in there looked good. But um, on me, I don't think she did the best job with the mapping. What Rio did was amazing. Like she, she, re she took like, I think 30 minutes just mapping my eyebrows and asking me like, is this the exact shape that you like? So she really took her time and then she numbed me up and um, honestly, it was so much less painful than the microblading. Is it uncomfortable to essentially get a tattoo on your face? Yeah, it's, it's not a comfortable experience per se, but I also don't think it's the most painful thing that I've ever done. I, it's quite manageable for me. She did use lidocaine and the lidocaine that Rio used apparently worked a whole lot better because I just was very relaxed. Um, even the very first time that she started, I was like, oh, this isn't bad at all. There were some areas that were a little like spicier than others, maybe a little bit more sensitive, but for the most part, not a terrible experience so i did a couple of sessions with the micro shading the first one definitely gave me a really good look when i went back in for my touch-up because this is something that you should know oftentimes you do have to go in for a touch-up treatment after everything heals and you you know kind of live with your brows for like a month or two you go back and you fill in or you thicken them or add more to the tail or you know just kind of tweak it to make it exactly what you want so when i went in for my last touch up towards like the early fall i think of 2019 um 
Rio did my brows and they were perfect. They were so, I loved them so much. And she was fantastic because at first when I told her that I wanted my brows, my brows to be gray, she was a little bit hesitant. Um, she knew I had gray hair. I mean, obviously I was like right in front of her and she was like, oh, your hair, do you think you're gonna color your hair ever again? Like she was just very nervous about me like not committing to my gray hair essentially and then leaving me with gray brows. And I was like, no, 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 I'm wholeheartedly committed to the gray hair. I'm not doing anything with this hair anymore. So I really would prefer something that matches my natural hair color at this point. So she mixed up the most perfect color. So that is why my brows match my hair so well. This isn't because of a product per se, like this isn't a pencil, this isn't like a powder, this is her mixing up like the pigment to literally match my hair. So I guess that's kind of the benefit of going with a person who is really good at this. <laughs> they do a good job of matching your brows to your hair. Um, this last time, by the way, that I went um, this past Monday, we did agree to add just a little bit of warmth to my brows. Um, so she added just a touch of brown, like a taupey brown to the formula. And I really like the way it turned out. So my brows are now completely healed. Um, there's nothing on my brows except for some SPF. Um, so, uh, and I really think that the healing this last time around was super fast. Like it did form just a little bit of like a dry kind of crust as it was healing just like it does with if you've had tattoos you know that there's a healing process and you put the the balm on that they give you and my um rio always sends me off with like a little tub of this healing cream that she actually makes herself and boy does it work like it just heals my brows super super quickly so there are no flakies left no dry spots like my brows are just they're perfect i wake up every day and my brows are perfect and I love it, you guys. I, for so many years of my life, I woke up with brows that were just barely visible on my face. And I, because of having a slightly larger face, like I'm not, I'm not a petite person, right? Like I feel like the brows really made a difference in the overall look of my face. Um, I will say when I don't wear makeup, it definitely looks, a slightly off to have brows that are so filled in um but when i do my makeup i think they suit the makeup looks that i tend to normally do quite well i don't think the brows are too harsh i don't think they're too bold i don't think they're too thick or too thin i think they just kind of suit my face perfectly and that's what i asked for from rio was just make sure that, you know, when you are mapping everything out, I want something that looks reasonable, somewhat natural in terms of like the scale um, compared to the rest of my features. And, um, you know, just use, use your artistic touch because she's an incredible artist. She also, she does tattoos as well. I'm actually gonna have her do a tattoo for me a little bit later on this year. I'll tell you guys about that later, but yeah. So I just am incredibly pleased with how well these brows have held up. So from 2019 to the very beginning of January 2023, I did not do anything to my brows. So um, they just were on my face and looked great. Quite frankly, I didn't think it was absolutely necessary for me to go in for a touch up, but I kind of figured it's been a few years. I do want to maintain this properly, so I'm gonna go see Rio, have her do a touch up. She was blown away by how well the micro shading had lasted. And she, for the very first thing she asked me, you know what she asked me? She was like, you use SPF every day, don't you? And I was like, yes, I do. And she goes, that is why your brows look as good as they do still. And why we're not gonna have to like, essentially completely redo anything because you protected the investment with the SPF. So every single day, SPF goes over these brows. Now with that, it does mute the color a little bit. So I will say, the one thing that I put very lightly over my brows every single day, and I wish I could link it for you, but it is discontinued, which I knew it was being discontinued, so I bought 
Um, I'm just gonna hold them all up. I bought all these backups because I love this particular powder so much. Um, this is the Tarte Amazonian Clay um, Volumizing Brow Powder in the shade gray. I don't know why most cosmetic companies do not offer a like couple of gray options when it comes to their brow pencils, brow powders, brow gels, brow whatever. I just feel like that's really missing. Now, Benefit, I think, has a pencil that's gray, but the vast majority don't offer gray options. Like, the, the grayest you're gonna get is like a taupe or like an ash blonde. And I did not like the look of taupe or ash blonde with my naturally gray hair. I wanted more of a like uniform look. So, I love gray. <laughs> It's just it's my thing right so anyway I do a very light application of this just over top of the SPF to bring a little bit of that original color back and this is the exact color of my brows essentially and I just use this really soft artiste brush and I literally just like it's just a matter of like going through them once like this and that's it um, it really doesn't deposit much of the powder at all it just kind of helps to undo the um, the SPF that I use has a little bit of a tint to it, so you can see that there. So it just kind of helps to counteract that tint a little bit that's in the SPF. But that is why my brows lasted as well as they did, because I used SPF every single day. So if you are going to invest in, um, heck, if you invest in skincare of any kind and you don't use SPF, why are you investing in skincare? <laughs> You're just gonna undo it every time that you go outside and expose yourself to the sun. So get an SPF that you like and put it on your face every single day. I think bare minimum is, you know, SPF 30, SPF 40 or 50 is probably even a little bit better. Also, you do have to reapply. But all that being said, um, I protected the investment. Um, the micro shading, so my initial session with Rio, I think I paid like, I think it was 650 for the micro shading, but that included my touch up. So I went back like six to eight weeks later and she did my touch up and it was included. And my touch up this go around was $450 because she didn't have to like completely go in and start over. So is it expensive? Yes. I saved up for it because it's worth it to me to not have to like paint my brows on my face every single day you will have to decide for you at this point I don't think I'm going to have to do another touch-up for another like four possibly even more years I mean the way that the last round held up and then even building more on top of like what I had left I think I've got a good amount of pigment that's going to last a good long while and if it starts to look a little faded, I'll definitely go back earlier, but I just, I don't even anticipate having to go back before at least three to four years from now. So to me, it is worth it. The convenience of waking up and having eyebrows, not having to like sit here and waste time every day, making sure they're even, all of that is worth it for me. Um, I would say if this is something that you really want to do, my top tips to you are please do your research do not purchase microblading or micro shading off of something like groupon just don't do it i know it can seem like a good deal but this is your face <laughs> and you are essentially putting a tattoo on your face do not go with the cheapest option um Sometimes it's worth it to invest a little bit more, save a little bit longer so that you love the end result. Um, having tattoos removed is not a pleasant process. And again, you're just gonna be shelling out more money. Like just save a little bit longer and go with someone who has a great reputation, has an amazing portfolio. If you have friends who have had the procedure done, ask them who they used. Ask lots of questions. What kind of pigments do you use? Do you take the time to really map a person's face? Um, you know, like how often do you recommend touch-ups? You know, 
Do you use lidocaine? Um, there's just, there's so many questions to ask. So all of the fears that you have, ask. Ask the tattoo artist any questions, share your concerns with them, allow them to put you at ease. So pick the artist carefully. Also, work with them on the color. I think sometimes people have um, their own kind of vision for what they want for you. I think it's important to find someone who wants to compromise with you and bring pictures. Bring pictures of people's brows that you like and say, I really like how her brows really match her hair, or I like how there is a slight difference between the brows and this person's hair. I think that I would like to achieve that. You know, just be very clear about what you want, what your expectations are, and then allow the artist to tell you kind of what their feedback is, if they have suggestions. Um, take the feedback, you know, I, I think that that's important as well, but make sure that they are not pushing, you know, their vision for your face onto you. I think that that's really important. So selecting the artist is so, so important. Um, also, if you are going to do this, make sure that you take care of the, um, uh, the micro shading or micro blading properly afterwards. You really need to make sure to keep that area super clean. So there is no makeup going on your face for several days after the procedure. So make sure you're comfortable with that. Keep it very clean. Wash, you know, I, I washed my brows twice a day and I used the solve that Rio gave me and it healed very, very quickly. And um, so following her advice allowed me to get a great end result follow the advice of the artist. Um, I think that that's key. <laughs> and then, um, you know, just make sure that you really are committed to this because um, if, you, if you get this procedure done and you decide, you know, six months from now that you want skinny brows again, um, it's gonna be hard to achieve that. So just really make sure that you are getting brows that just kind of suit your face naturally. And then, you know, make sure that you are past the point in your life where you are wanting to participate in brow trends maybe. For me, I am done with the brow trends. I did that in my teens, I did that in my 20s, and now that I'm 44, um, I really just like things to look a little bit more like, they are suited to my natural features versus forcing something onto my face that may not necessarily look the best on me. So um, those would be my top tips. Just pick that person really carefully, you guys. Do your research, read reviews, go based on recommendations of friends or acquaintances. Um, you know, go on different forums. There might be forums in your area that, um, you know, talk about cosmetic artists in the area and, you know, just really research that person carefully. This is a big investment and it is a somewhat permanent um, thing that you are doing your, to your face. Now, over time, if you do not touch your micro shading up, it will fade. Will it ever fade completely? I, I don't know. I mean, mine had definitely faded a little bit, but my brows were still very much on my face after several years. So I anticipate it would be quite some time before they faded to the point where you were like, oh yeah, I've never like had anything done to my brows type of situation. So yeah, anyway, those are my top tips. For me, this was like, an amazing decision you guys i will continue to maintain it long term um you know my the artist that i go to she she has her own business and so she intends on being around for quite some time i've told her you are not allowed to move you are not allowed to quit you you need to keep going with this <laughs> so um yeah once you find someone stick with that person um listen to their guidance but also make sure that they listen to your wants as well and i think once you find that good fit and you get it done and it's something that you really want it is fabulous honestly this makes me so happy waking up with eyebrows is just one of these small joys that i get to experience every single day and it's my it's fully my own fault for over plucking so it's my bad, but 
I don't know. At least in my 40s, I was able to kind of like figure it out and correct it. So, all right. If you have any questions about my brows, the procedure, the aftercare, the finding of an artist, any of that stuff, leave it down below in the comments. Also, let me know if you have experience with micro shading or microblading, what your thoughts are. Um, you know, I think it's definitely a very personal decision and I always welcome other people's experiences in the comments as well. So make sure that if you're watching this video and thinking about doing something like this, that you always look at the comments as well and just kind of read through those and see what other people say as well. For me, it's two thumbs up, but you know, it's something that you have to figure out for yourself. So um, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. I appreciate you being here. If you found this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Toodling.